Before I get into today's video, I wanted to cover my bases with a couple of things that I initially left out when first recording it. First thing is I highly recommend checking out exit point number 23 with Todd from Apex, where he actually talks about the invention of the tailgate. Very, very interesting to go back and just kind of listen to how that process unfolded and how revolutionary it was. Next thing is all of us know that the reason that we're using a tailgate is to try to keep the tail closed during opening to hopefully prevent tail first inflation, lines coming around the front and causing a line over. It's also important to note that by keeping the tail closed, we're promoting a nose first inflation. Benefits of that are we're gonna have better heading, assuming that your pack job is good and symmetrical. And there were some other things that kind of came in as well, like exposing the nose or wrapping the nose around your pack job. I believe that those can also encourage a nose first inflation. And even later than that, I think that having a ZP nose on your canopy and just, again, encouraging a lot more air to hit that area first and get expansion through that area will also prevent the potential chance of having a line over. So those are a couple, just a couple of things I left out within the video. Again, don't get freaked out by any of the stuff. Don't think you have to start running out and going crazy with wraps on your tailgate and all of that sort of stuff. This is just all, none of this is new information. This is all stuff that either people have shown me or have talked to people in the background. But what I'm finding more and more is that all of this stuff I feel like should be common knowledge amongst everybody, but it's not. So these videos are an attempt to get more of these conversations out in the light. Okay, let's go. What's up everybody? Thank you so much for the response on the video a couple of days ago. So many people getting in there, making comments, giving opinions, asking questions, and ultimately that's what I'm trying to accomplish with this video series. We need more of that out in the public light. I have these kind of discussions in the background on a daily basis, and I wanna start putting out more of that stuff. So. Thank you so much, first off. I wasn't gonna get into this particular topic just yet, but I feel like it's appropriate given a couple of the comments um, from the video the other day. So there were a few people in there that said that they had friends who had had lineovers while using tailgates. Now, I have no idea on the particulars of those incidents, so I'm not like calling those people out individually. I just kind of wanna go in a little bit deeper on the actual tailgate. So in the video example that I used, I believe I prefaced it with when a tailgate functions correctly, it looks like this. And then you saw the canopy with the nose opening first and then the tail following, kind of this horseshoe effect, right? So there's a couple of things that we can do in order to encourage the tailgate to work correctly. The first of that is ensuring that we have a good, strong rubber band on the tailgate. Again, if you use painter's tape, that's totally fine, functions great, but I'm just gonna talk about rubber bands in this example. Use reusing a rubber band over and over and over again, all that's happening is that rubber band is getting weaker and weaker and weaker with each deployment that it experiences. If you're in the habit of tying the, tail, tying the rubber band to the tailgate, you're probably gonna use it until it breaks. So basically you're using it until it doesn't work. You're either gonna have a partial failure or a total failure at some point, and then you're like, oh shit, I gotta replace the rubber band. So that's the first thing. Rubber bands are so cheap. Every manufacturer sells them in different ways. I sell a hundred of them for $5. So even at five bucks, you have a hundred jumps if you're gonna use a fresh one. There's no excuse really. The, the cost of it is just a, a non-issue. The second thing is to be aware of how many wraps of the rubber band that you're doing. Let's watch some video. So in this first video, we can see as the canopy is deploying, the tail just completely opens before the nose. In the line over video, I had flash on the screen, no tailgate. I just did that as an example. This jumper was using a tailgate with two wraps on the rubber band. The next jump that we went out and did, we put three wraps on the rubber band and his opening looked like this. You can see the difference. Nose opens first, then the tail opens. I did explain this in my packing priorities video which you can check out if um, you haven't as well. But considering this just popped up the other day, that saying that you use a tailgate isn't enough. You know, the strength of the rubber band and how many wraps that you're using do play a huge role in it. And I don't wanna freak people out and have people running around and putting five wraps on their tailgate and all that sort of stuff. The way that you 
figure this out is you go out, you make a jump, you have somebody film from the top and have a look at your deployment. Is it opening with nose first, tail partially closed, and then it pops? Is it opening more like an accordion where the nose and the tail are opening at the same time? Or is your tail opening first and you're having a tailgate failure or an early release and it's just opening tail then nose? Start asking questions about that. Start to make some um, decisions for yourself. Start experimenting a little bit, but be very careful. It's a very delicate process. If you start adding wraps on the rubber band for when you're doing free falls, make sure that you dial it back when you're doing unpacked jumps or PCAs and static lines, because that's when you run the risk of having a tailgate hang up. They're very, very uncommon. The only people that I've seen have had them are people who are on extremely light wing loadings or very small jumpers in general with small parachutes. Those two things combined have a recipe for doing that at low air speeds, meaning again, an unpacked or a PCA. Okay, let's leave it at that for today. And lastly, because I know that some people are gonna ask about it, if you're curious about using a tailgate slider up, Squirrel wrote a great article I'm going into some detail on that. I'll leave the link in the description. Personally, I don't see any downside to using it and it's an interesting idea. Another thing, if anybody knows anybody that's ever had a tailgate hang up when doing a free fall, so any kind of jump that wasn't a PCA, unpacked or static line, please let me know. I'd love to know the circumstances surrounding it. And it's one of these things, I don't think it's possible to happen. Even if you had 10 wraps on the rubber band, I believe it's gonna break from the, the amount of force that's being generated when you hit the bottom of the lines. It's not something I'm gonna test, not something I would recommend anybody go out and try, but I'd be very curious to hear if anybody has experienced that on a free fall. Let me know and I'll see you for the next one.